Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to give you a beginner's guide to LibreOffice 6 Writer. So I've downloaded the latest version of LibreOffice so I've got LibreOffice 6 here and we're going to be looking at Writer today. So I'm going to click on this application and load it and like usual the first thing we should do is make a save of our document. So I'm going to go to file save as and we'll go here into here and we call this tutorial in fact what we're going to call this is default template dash zero one and there's a reason for that and we'll look at that later we just call it a default template let's click save so one thing to note is you've got this toolbar down the side here and we use this quite often in LibreOffice normally Microsoft Office uh, the toolbars will be up at the top here that we use but we use a combination of the tools at the top here and this styles and this formattings and settings down the side here. So there's various options in here that we can look at to use. Now in this example, what I want to do is create a almost like a letterhead for a business because this is a good example of where you may create a document. You can use this technique for various documents, but let's assume that we're going to be creating a business letterhead for your business. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is sort out something called the page style so if you notice um, there's a gap here and there'll be a gap on the bottom down here and this is called the header and the footer section so this is almost like reserve space for the header and the footer and it's got a margin here as well as you can see when you print it out the text would always or well, the page will always have this blank gap on the side and at the top here so this is normally how it's done but what we want to do is set a default uh, page style for the first page and then every other subsequent page will have its own style so this might not make much sense but I'm going to explain as we go so what we want to do is go ahead and click on this option here called styles right here styles and we're going to go to this section here called page styles when we click on page styles we'll see these various options and in this tutorial we're only concerned with really two options the default page style and the first page style so in the first page style we want to click on it and we want to right click and click modify and when we click modify normally you'll be on this this organize here and we want to go to header and tick this option and we want to go to footer and also tick this option and then click apply and click OK. That's what we want to do. Then we're going to go to the default style. We're going to right click and modify. And in this one, we're going to tick the footer only. We don't want a header here. We only want the footer. We're going to click apply and OK. So as you notice, not really any, nothing's really changed. But what we're going to do is click on this first page and just double click on it. And when you double click on it, you'll see default style down here will change the first page right down here. So I'm going to double click and you'll see now it's saying first page. So the next thing we want to do is go to insert and page break here. And we get a page break now. So we've got two pages, we can say. Now what you'll notice is on the first page, if we double click in the top section up here, or just single click you'll see there's a first page header and if we scroll down the page and click down here we have a first page footer but if we try and do the same on the default page there is no header inserted we don't want a header here but we do want a footer here okay so this will become more apparent while we've done this so in the top section here in fact the first thing we should do is really sort out our before we do the header and the footer we should sort out our um, default font styles so for this we're going to click on character styles here in fact we'll click on paragraph styles here paragraph styles and in the default style here so if you see this drop down menu there's options here with loads of different styles you've got title subtitle header one header two header three footer header all these different options and all we're really concerned with in this tutorial today is to sort out the default style uh, we'll look at sorting out the text body and the header one header two and header three so we'll write in here 
heading one, heading two, heading three, text, body, and default. So we've got these four different types of um, styles in our formatting. Now you can leave them exactly as they are right now, but I want to show you how you can change them because when you come to format your document later, if you sort these headings and default styles out now, you can just click a mouse button and you can format your page very, very quickly. So we need to set these styles up first so that we're able to do that later. So let's select the heading one. And as we scroll, uh, where are we? Maybe we're in the wrong section. Let's click here. Headings here. So there's a little option here, headings. And we want to click on heading one. We want to right click and select modify. And inside of here, we want to go to font. And you see we speak, it's picked a specific font here for us. There's loads of fonts that you can select from here. Today, we're going to just focus on using Arial. So I'm going to click Arial and I'm going to leave everything else as it is. So it's Arial, bold, 130. And we'll click Apply and click OK. So when we double click on this heading now, it will change to Arial, bold, and 130%. And we'll select Heading 2 and then we'll right click here, Modify. And we'll go to the font and we'll also select Arial. There's a few ways to find the fonts. You can just type in Arial here and it will find it much quicker. And if you remember last time it was 130, and now it's 115. So it's Arial Bold 115. Apply, OK, double click, and that will be our heading two. Then we want to do the same for heading three. So we'll select it, we'll right click, modify, we'll type in Arial here as well, and that will be bold, and it's actually just uh, the default font, so we want to set the heading 3 to something like 100, and click apply, click OK, and we'll double click that, and that will be our heading 3. Then we've got the text body. So inside of here, we'll find text body down here. So we're going to right click that, modify. And we'll type in Arial here as well. And it's set to Arial 12 point and we'll click OK. OK here. We can double click that, that will be our text body. And then default will be right at the top here. We'll modify. And we'll set that to Arial. And that will also be set to regular 12 point apply. Okay, so now we've got our font styles sorted out. These are not all of them. You can see there's loads of different ones. You can go all up to heading 10 and there's all these other different options and it will be quite some time if I went through every single one. But for now, this will be fine. So we can select these and actually delete them. I know it doesn't make sense, but we can actually access them from here, heading 1, 2, 3. We've got a default here in our text body, so we can select them from here now quite quickly and format our page. So the next thing we want to do um, let's just set this to default style. So the first line here will be set to default style. And now we want to sort out the header. So when we double click inside this header, we actually want to insert what we call an invisible table. So in the table option up here, we're going to select one row, but uh, two columns like this, two little blue boxes like this. And that will set it like this. Then we can select this and uh, somewhere here we'll see Let's have a look here. Okay, it's all down here, the options. So what we want to do is select the border style and select none here. We want to select none. So you can see the table in here. Let's save this. But when we try and print preview, the table will be invisible. And the only reason we're doing this table here is that we want to put a logo on this side and we want to put an address on this side, like you would see on the letterhead. So to do this, we're going to click on this right cell here and we're going to right align it by selecting this option here. And we're going to type in a company name. I'm just going to make this one up. So let's say it's called 
um, hello world limited and we put an address I'll just make this up so let's call it Glen Street Ilford London so now we've got our address here and we can maybe make this font a bit smaller now because you're doing it in the header you could create a header style for it but normally you'll use this only once so we don't really need to make a style for it so all we're going to do is just set it to Arial and we'll set it to 10 point just to make it a bit smaller and then underneath that we'll put in a telephone number so we just make one up so that will be our address there so the next thing we want to do is get a logo in here so let's find a logo that we can use so I'm going to open up my web browser just going to go to my website let's refresh this we'll go to the portfolio and company logo so I just want to pick a logo from here that we can use just as a temporary one so we use we'll use this one here just as a temporary example you would put your own logo in here so I need to do a bit of editing on this quickly so let's just drag this logo here So I've got the logo here and this is a bit beyond the scope of this tutorial but I just need to do a quick edit and explain why I'm doing that. I'm just going to drag and drop the logo into here and what we want to do with the logo is make sure there's minimum white space around the logo. You see there's a lot of white space around this and this won't work so well in that document. So I'm just going to crop the image, edit, crop. I just want to try and get rid of as much of this white space as possible. We really want to minimize it to the maximum. Something like this. So if you've got a graphic designer, you know how to use GIMP Photo Editor, any sort of software, Photoshop, you can just crop it out or ask your graphic designer to do that for you. And we just want the minimum amount of white space right around there. You want it cut as close as possible and save this. So here we have the image to tidy things up a little bit. What I'll do is add that image into this directory here. So it's with our default document and then with our document open I just want to take that logo and drag and drop it into the document here so you can see it's trying to fit it as best as possible but we just want to resize that um, just so it fits nicely in this box right here and we can drag it to the left a bit so it sits nice and clean like this so if we save this and go to file print preview now we see our logo and our address here this is typically what you might see on a letterhead that you receive in the post. You'll see the logo and the address, but remember, most of the times on the second page, what we call the continuation page or the third page, you won't see the logo there and the address. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But in most cases, the continuation page won't have this logo or address here. So the next thing we want to do, we can click close preview here, is we really want to put a line to separate this logo and um, this address. So we can select this table, so we just click, we can either move our mouse cursor to the left hand side here and you see this little black arrow will appear, then we can left click and that will select the whole table or we can click inside and hold down the mouse button and drag across and that will also select the whole table. And we want to go back down to this option here and we want to select this option right here. This will draw a line, it's hard to see but this one here will draw a line at the bottom of the table only. So let's click that. Okay. Save this. And then we'll go to print preview. And then we'll see, zoom in a bit here, we'll see this line separating our content above. Okay. So let's start to add some content to the page. In fact, before we do that, let's go ahead and sort out this footer. So down here we've got a footer and 
normally what I would do here is insert a table, but just one row and one column, one row, one column. And for this table, what we'll do is center the content. So we're going to center it. And in here, we're going to select default style. Let's just center it again. And we're going to do www.dcpweb.co.uk. Now, annoyingly, it will put a capital W at the beginning. So you just need to go back, uh, put a W in between, and then delete this first W like this. So then we've got the website address there. And as default, it'll create a, a URL link out of it. Um, so it's clickable. So if we were to convert this to a PDF later, which I'll show you how to do, then that will be an active link in the PDF file. The next thing we want to do is move our mouse cursor to the left hand side here and click and this will highlight this table. And then this time we want to select this option here. And what that will do, in fact, let's uh, go back. Let's select this first option, which will remove all the borders. And then we'll go back and select this one here, which will draw a line across the top only. So if we go to our, let's just save this actually first, save, go to file, print preview now. Now we've got a footer section uh, with uh, the website address here. And we've got a header section here with uh, our address details here. And uh, in theory, you don't really need this first line, right? It's called Hello World, but you've got, kind of got your branding there already. So we could probably get rid of that. We can save a bit of space there, right? And then we'll just resize this logo a bit more. And I think that will be making more sense. Let's have a look, print preview. Yeah, that makes more sense because you don't really need yeah, the company address there because you've got the logo here as well. So inside the document, imagine if you're writing this document to your customer or you're preparing a documentation for a project or you're doing something that you need to do, um, could be for various things, right? The first thing that you normally see in the document is the date. All documents, not all, but most documents will have a date. So to do this, we're going to, going to make sure that we've got default style selected here. We're going to select right align and look, my mouse cursor is right here yeah, on the first line. And we're going to right align this and we're going to put in date. Uh, we'll put in the, let's just do any old date, 30th of the month 2018. And then we're going to hit the enter key. And then we're going to select default style again from the drop down here. And that will left align it. So let's see what that looks like, if it looks good. I always check as I go along, we can see the date here. So maybe this font style is a bit large, right? It's set to 12 point. So maybe let's set that to 10 point. Looks a bit big here. So let's go to our default style, modify. And we'll set it to 10, apply. Okay, now all the fonts will be 10, but we also need to do that for the text body. So let's set that one. In fact, that's already set to 10. So I think uh, the text body and the default are kind of related together somehow. So just bear, bear that in mind. So this is all looking good. Let's save this. This will be a title for this document. So here you would write a proper title. So it might be some web development notes or a project or whatever you might want to write here. And then we can go to default style and select heading one. Now we need to ask ourselves a question. Let's just go to page preview. And for me, that looks way too big. It just doesn't look nice. So let's reduce the size of this heading one tag. So we're going to right click, modify. I feel it's set to 130, right? So let's set it to something like uh, 120. Apply, probably 110, apply. So maybe something like this will be fine. But then remember our heading two, modify, is set to 115, so slightly smaller, that's, that's fine. And then let's make sure our heading three is set to something like 14, that's our heading three set to 14. So that should be fine as well. So this will be a title that you'll put into your document. And when you hit the enter key, as default, it will move to the text body because you're in the body of the document, so it will move to the text body style. And it, it looks like the text body and the default style are directly connected. Let's just test that 
So if we go to right click modify and let's set it to something like silly like 16 apply and okay and then let's see if this one changes as well it might not though modify set to 10 so let's go back here modify we'll set this back to 10 and let's try and change this one to 16 and let's see if this changed in any way 10 okay so they're not connected so let's not worry about that we'll just leave it to 10 apply okay so they're, they're not directly connected but the default body text is what we're going to use when we write our content so this is a sample paragraph for the You know it might be worth uh, there's this you know as web developers and as whenever we want content to put in a document we go to this website called Laura Lipsum and what it does is just give you some default text to use that you can just cut and paste as placeholder text so this just saves you time and the reason why we use this text, you see, let me paste it below here. I'm just going to paste this lower lipsum text. I'm going to select it all. Let's just select it. And we'll just select default. Like this. We'll select clear formatting here. And this is still bold. So let's unbold this. And the reason why we use lower ellipsum is if I take this text here and just continuously paste it, it looks okay, but it doesn't really give a real representation of what content might be in here when it's got different words and different spacing and stuff like this. So lower ellipsum is a good way to get some default text into your document when you're doing some sort of exercise like this, especially like page layouts for web development or even just document design like this. So we'll get rid of this paragraph here. And we're going to use Laurel Ipsum. So you can go to this website called ipsum.com and you've got all these different languages actually. So that's quite interesting. I never noticed that before, but you've got, you know, Laurel Ipsum in all these different languages as well. So that's quite interesting. Um, so yeah, use this website if you get a chance. So this will be our introduction text to whatever this document is. And it may be, you know, a couple of paragraphs of text and those paragraphs might be something looking like this so you've got two options here you know normally in documents you would always have your written content left aligned but you can select the content and you can use something called block justify so you can block justify documents some people like that some people don't i kind of like block justify it makes the content look nice and uniform like you see in a newspaper you see block justify a lot of people will say that's not right you shouldn't do that uh, this is down to your own preference so if you want to use block justify use it if you don't don't if it makes if you think it makes it harder for your customer to read then I would suggest you don't use it um, you can just use the default left align here so we will say it's a block justify but this is your choice so underneath this here uh, we're building up a document, right, with some information, some placeholder information. Normally, I'll use something like this document, this type of document, to do um, web development specifications for projects. So before I, when my customer comes to me, they'll ask me to build a website for them, and they'll give me loads of information, and I want to document that information and then send it back to them to ask them, look, everything I've written in here, is it correct? Is there anything need to be changed? And then that document becomes a part of the project that I'll hand over to my developers. So that's what I normally use these types of documents for. So the next thing we want to do is add a heading to. So this will be a title for this document. This will be a main title, a, a main 
title for this document. So normally there's, in most cases there's normally like one heading, one tag. But you may use more than one, it's up to you. But I'm going to copy this and paste it down to here. And you'll notice that when you cut and paste the heading one tag, it will automatically add like some spacing between the information. But we want to select this heading one tag and we'll go to heading two. Now look at heading two, it seems to be bigger than heading one for some reason. So we need to go and fix that. So we're going to right click modify. It's set to 115. I think heading one we set to 110, right? 110. So let's right click modify and we'll set this to 100, apply, okay. So now you can see it's smaller than the uh, title above. And in this case, we're just gonna add a little introduction text here. So maybe up to something like this. And I wanna show you how to add a bullet list. So here we can see the bullet list option. So if we click on the bullet list, or if we click on the little arrow next to it, we get all these different options, right? And there's more bullet lists here as well. But let's just, this is a beginner's tutorial, so we wanna keep it quite basic. So you've got small bullets, you've got bigger bullets. Uh, you've got, what else we've got in here? We've got arrows. Uh, normally I use like the large bullet or the square ones. It's up to you really, but let's just stick with these large round bullets. Or even the small ones will look okay as well, I guess. But let's try the large ones, right? So, in here we want to have some placeholder text, so we paste this into here. And each bullet would normally be a, a different line of text. You know, it wouldn't always say the same information. So this is what Laurie Lipsum is good for. We can just cut and paste this text in here as a placeholder. And each one will look a bit different. Rather than them all looking the same. And we'll paste one more in. So we've got one, two, three, four, five bullets. Now sometimes you want to emphasize a bullet or a bullet might be a subsection of the bullet above. So to do that, we'll select this text here, paste it below. And then uh, we have these indentation options here, you see? So we're gonna demote. So if we click this one uh, to the right, it will move one to the right and it will show a different bullet style. So let's select these and we can maybe change them to the default bullet or we can leave them as this style. We can check out the different styles now, right? So in theory, if uh, we go back one, let's go back and back. Let's go forward one, yeah, this is fine. Let's go back to our normal bullets. And then you can even have a sub bullet of this one as well. So if we were to take, uh, let's just paste this here. And when you hit the enter key, and because you've indented it using this tool here, the next bullet will also be indented. So if we take one more line of text, and paste it here and we'll grab one more line and paste it now on this one I want it to move back to the original position in this line so we're going to click this back option and paste it now you could even indent it more so you could go two times and it will go to another style you can even go one more style in and you can keep moving it in until you build your structure for your document I use this tool a lot the bullet list tool to build page structure for example so i might have like home page about us and underneath about us it might have a section called history so when it has this section called history i indent it because it belongs to the about us page but it's underneath it's a sub option and that then you might have something like another sub option called team members underneath about us page so that's how i indent the content that really helps my developers to build the page structure and for my client to understand the structure so let's move this one back to tidy it up a little bit. And now we've got some bullet lists. So that's how you're gonna go about creating bullet lists. So we'll hit the enter key, and we'll hit the enter key one more time. And when we do that, it will come out of the bullet list function. So now we're on a new line here. So let's add one more page title. So we're gonna copy this page title here. Let's say this will be a second title for this document right it's because it's the heading two so it's second style we'll call it we'll copy this paste it and we'll say that this is going to be the third and we'll select it 
if we check heading two, it was set to 14, it says here. So let's go to modify and we'll set this one to 12. Okay, apply it and then we'll double click here and that will set it to a smaller style than heading two. Now we're starting to see some structure. Let's save this, go to file and we'll go to print preview. And now we can start to see the structure of our document, which is looking quite good. Obviously we can do a ton of more things here. This is a beginner's tutorial, so I didn't want to spend too much time on real technical stuff. Uh, I will do some more advanced tutorials later, so I'll probably follow this one up with something a bit more advanced and we'll continue from this document. So let's go down to here and we'll hit the enter key. And when we hit the enter key, it's going to automatically move us to the body text style and we'll use our lower ellipsum again. So let's copy this much lower ellipsum and paste it here and we'll paste another one here. So we've got these two paragraphs. In fact, we'll make it like one. Let's just make it like this sort of text here. So sometimes um, you want to add an image to a document. So that might be whatever it might be. It doesn't really matter. It's just an image, let's say. yeah. Um, so I've got my folder here and I'm going to go to this website called, this is one of my favorite websites, right? Um, splash. So if you're ever looking for free images, this website is really good. It's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing website. So these, you can use like uh, images offer here, they're royalty free. So you can use them on your web projects. You can use them for tutorial videos like this or wherever you want to use them. It's all good. So in here we'll type in business and maybe we'll just pick this picture here. And when I select it, I can click on it to enlarge it and check it. But I need to click this free download button here, the green one. And that will start to download the image. And in this case, it's going to download it and show it down here. So I'm going to drag that picture and drop it into this folder here. And we will close this and we'll minimize this. So we can take this picture and drag and drop it into the document here. Now, because the image is quite large, the software says there's no way that that image is going to fit in this space. So I'm going to move the content to a new page and I'm going to put the image here. And the image can be moved, so it can be moved down to the bottom here. We can drag it up a bit like this. Or we can shrink the image down to something like this size and then we can start to drag it to the side of the document like here somewhere. Now in theory we should be able to let's have a look here. I want to try and add a I haven't done this for a while, so bear with me. Spacing left and right. So we want spacing on our left side. Let's just say, let's try and set it to half a centimeter. Okay, good stuff. So what I wanted to do is add a gap here, you see? So as I move this image, where is it gone? It's up here now. As I move this image, this gap will be maintained between the content. So I did that by clicking on the picture, going to graphics, modify, and then I went to wrap, uh, and then I set the page, maybe it's, that's a little bit too big. So let's set it to 0 0.3. So 0 0.30 centimeters. Click apply, and that gap looks pretty good. And we'll click okay. So there, we can put a picture in, we can resize it here as well, slightly. Maybe try and get it to match the height here. And that's how we're going to go about adding images to the document. Um, so let's check out what it looks like now. Let's go to print preview. And it's looking quite good, the document, right? It's looking decent. Here on the side, you can select single page. And you can select multi-page. You can select page by page. You can select audio. You can select multiple page. There's all these different options to view the document. Um, normally when I'm working on a specific page, I like to just view it as a single page. Or you can select um, this option here, side by side. 
Okay, let's close this. Let's save this. Now, one thing to be aware of is you can see that there's this white gap here. We want to maintain that. So in theory, you can drag the picture over the gap. Like you can even drag it off, you know, all the way to the edge, but it's going to look a bit rubbish. Um, when you look at your print preview, the image is going to be off the page and all the content will look very nice. So just be aware that you need to drag it in and try and get it aligned, aligned here. You know, in worst case, uh, in best case we always make sure there's a little gap here so it will look nice okay so you can see the mass cursor is positioned here right we can just move straight down to the second page and this is going to be our second page content now what you'll notice if I save this and go back to our print preview this is our first page and this will be our second page but we never put a footer down here so on, what we're going to do is go to this page here, we'll select this table, we'll control C to copy, so control C is copy, or you can go to edit, copy, try and remember these shortcuts, control C to copy, control X to cut, and control V to paste, normally copy and paste are the ones you're going to use the most, control C to copy, control V to paste, you probably know these already, and they're, they're quite close on the keyboard, so try and remember those, because I use them very often. So we'll go down to here and click down here on the footer on the second page and paste it. Let's uh, try it. And then you just need to get rid of that gap. So when you paste it, there's a gap at the top. Just click above there and just hit the delete key. So move your mouse cursor here and hit the delete key on your keyboard. And that will get rid of that gap. So what's going on here? Let's go back to page preview. Now we've got two footers and only one header on the first page. So when we build page three, four, five, six, seven, eight, if we ever did, they will always inherit this footer on every single page. So if we close this and save it, and if we were to go to, if I zoom out a little bit here, right? If I, the mass is on the second page here. If I go to insert page break, you'll see the footer is already there because it's inheriting the default style. This is what we did at the very beginning of the tutorial. Uh, if we zoom in, click on this first, click on the first page. Remember, it was called first page style, and then every other page will be called the default page style. Default page. So if we add a blank page and we don't want it, you know, you don't want to print the document with an extra page every time. We can just move our mouse cursor to the top of the page that we don't want and hit the delete the backspace key on the keyboard. Yeah. That's right above the enter key or below the F11 and F12 key normally. So we'll hit the backspace key and that will get rid of that page. And now we're back to our two pages again. So let's go in and we will add a second title, a uh, header style two. And we're going to paste that into here. And we've got some lower ellipsum text. Maybe we will paste it a few times just to fill out the content a little bit. And underneath here, I want to show you how to um, add a table. So sometimes in the documents I create, I need to create a table. Uh, normally I do the table when I'm creating a form on a website. So it would have like first name, last name, telephone number, email address, and I need to add some columns and describe these fields to my customer but also describe them to the developer. So let's take a typical scenario like that. Let's actually build a table with some fields that I would normally use when I build a form on a website. So just to clarify, if we go to my website and go to get a free quote, this is what I'm talking about. So when I want this structure here, if I go to the home page and I say to my developers, do you know what? We wanna, we wanna enter your name, enter your email address, phone number, type of website, some comments and get a free quote button. These fields I need to describe in the document. So let's try and do that here. To do this, in this example, and sometimes it's worth kind of thinking about how many columns you're gonna need. I already know that I need three columns. And I know that I'm gonna need at least three rows. So I'm gonna select three by three here like this. And in the table, um, one other thing to note quickly, um, let's go to, let's click here, right? So when I click here on the document, 
the, in, the, the settings for the document will be here. If I click on the picture, the settings will change over here, right? If I click on the footer, then the settings will change here. But also you get options down here. You see all these different options? These are some, some of these options are replicated. Some of these actually don't show in the header up here. But some of them do as well. So it's kind of quick access. If you're towards the footer, you can access like the paint bucket tool here, right? All these different options, some of these options here. But some of them you will see at the top as well sometimes. Um, so just bear with that, right? Um, you just need to really work with the document. When you're creating one of these documents, uh, normally, like I said to you, we've got this default document here, the template. What this will become, after we finish this document, this will become our template. And then we can just copy this template and reuse it again. So I'm going to show you an example of that when we finish this. So the reason why I was identifying this footer section is when I click on table, it will show me like the table options, the options that are relevant for tables, like adding and removing rows, like add a column to the left. So if we were to do something like, um, you know, add a column to the right, it depends on where your mouse is positioned. So if I position my mouse here and say add a column to the right, if I click that, it will add a column here, right? And uh, let's see, row, column. So if I select this column and then click this one, it will get rid of that column. And it kind of messes up the, the thing here a little bit. I don't know if there's a way. Uh, it would be nice if there was like a distribute, eat, merge, cell, split, split table, optimize size. Let's see. Distribute columns evenly. Oh, there you go. Magic. So in here, if you click on the little arrow, you can use this tool here to distribute the columns evenly. And that's what I wanted to get back to this original style. Okay. So in this first column, I'm going to add field name. And then I'm going to do field type and then some sort of comment, right? And then I'll select this. See, I can select the first row by moving my mouse cursor here. I just want to select it and make it bold because this is going to be my title. So this one is going to be, the first field is going to be called first name. Then we're going to have sir name. Well, let's just do a last name. Now you see we've got a problem here. We've got no more rows because I want to make more rows down here so how do I do that there's a few different ways to do that on the keyboard if you want to navigate between these cells so let's say you're on this first cell you can press the tab key on your keyboard which is above the caps lock here the tab key so we press tab and that will tab us across and when we get to the very last cell if we press tab it will generate a new row for us so tab tab we press it one more time and it will generate the row for us that's one way of doing it or you can, I believe, you can use uh, insert row below here. So that will insert a row as well by clicking this button here. But I tend not to use these options here. I just press the tab key to get to the next uh, row that I want to generate. So first name, last name, email address, telephone number, comment. So this, on my website, for example, on my client's website, we want the customer to fill out these fields to send us a message. So first name will be called a text field. And we'll copy this because the last name and the email address will also be text fields. And so will the phone number. But the comment will be text area. It will be a text area. Um, and then uh, let's, in above comment, we're going to insert so you can do it this way as well there's so many options and so many different ways to do things so if i were to highlight this row and then right click and then go insert row above i can insert a row above that way we can also go down here and click insert row above you know this right click tool when you right click there's normally quite a lot of options in here that you can use to um access information or access tools or features quite quite easily so that's what I normally use. So in here, well, I missed one thing. I want to do, uh, let's say, type of 
product and this will be a drop down list so when I'm doing this document for my customer or for my developers normally I will try and get as much space for the comment section so you can move your mouse cursor in between the columns at the top here uh, like this right here and then you can drag across to reduce the space on these columns but leave enough space for the comments so first name is quite obvious last name is quite obvious email address normally I'll type in here something like default validation so what does that mean that means that when the customer types in the email address our the website I'm building will use some default validation so it will make sure the email address doesn't have any spaces and make sure it's got an at sign make sure there's a dot in the in the email address for like uh, info at dcpweb.co.uk there's a dot in there and some format uh, some validation default validation so in phone number we normally use something called external validation so this is done by a third party company we purchase a service from them and they'll validate the phone number is actually real before the customer submits the form the last thing you want is your customer to type in the phone number and the phone number they've typed in incorrectly because people type in fast and they happen to type it incorrectly so if you can flag it to them that the phone number is invalid then they can check the phone number and see the error and fix it and that's better for you because then you can communicate with the customer and in the drop down list we'll have uh, let's say um, custom website uh, e-commerce website and then let's just say something like WordPress so really what I'm emphasizing there is something like this like type of website these options in here so normally I just put them in commas separated here and then this is just a customer comment section so that's it we've built the table we don't need this last row so there's two ways to get rid of it uh, we can highlight it and then just hit the bas the backspace key in fact that doesn't work so we'll try and hit the delete key that doesn't work either so we can just click here and we can do delete row that will work okay so let's save this now in theory uh, let's have a look here what is this background color so you can select this option here right yellow and it will make this top section yellow then underneath you can select all of these just by left clicking there's two ways to select all of the table or all of these these elements here in white you can left click on first name cell and then drag all the way down or you can highlight from the left hand side click and then drag down as well and then in the other one we can uh, go to custom or well, actually we can go to LibreOffice here and we can select maybe like a green color so we can differentiate them you don't have to do that you can just leave it all white we can save this let's have a look we had like this green here maybe yellow it's obviously entirely, it's entirely up to you maybe one other thing I'll do is highlight this table headers here and I will set them to 12 point make them slightly larger and save it so let's go you can what is it so normally I'm going to file and going down to here print preview right there's actually a button right here print preview now you can see the document and we're starting to fill it with more content now we've got a table in here um, so that's another thing so normally in the documents that I create I want to show my customer some examples of the work that I've done previously so to do this we'll take our third uh, title here and I'm going to show you how you can add um, Fact, we'll leave the space there we need some space so normally I'll write a little line of text is uh, let's hit the enter key normally I'll write in here something like why not check out some of the website projects that I've built previously and I want to show you how you can add URL links to any document really any internet based web page or document that you want to add to so normally I do this in a bullet list so I'll click bullet here 
and we're going to set it to our default style which is uh, the large bullet so we want it to be consistent in the document right and in here you know let's uh, think about a few projects that I've built so what I normally do is go to the internet type in like a new website so I just finished this website for a client right so I'm going to copy this and we'll just minimize and paste it to here and when I paste and hit the enter key the software will detect that it's actually a URL link and make it um, a, a clickable link automatically so we'll add a few examples in here let's uh, go to my portfolio quickly we'll get some out of here window shadings this is another nice project I worked on so yeah this was a good site let's copy this one We'll do a few here. Uh, we'll do this is another nice site I built. And we'll do one more, right? Let me done. Let's do this Star Wars website. So normally I would write a little bit of text here, just explain to my customer, here's some examples of website projects that I built. So in this document, if you were to, what I would suggest is that you create this document as an open office document, right? Called default template. And then you can write all your content and I'm going to show you that in a moment, how you can, you know, reuse this content, for example. But I would never send this document to my customer. I would only ever send them a PDF file because uh, the PDF file can't really be, in theory it can be edited, but in most cases, most customers won't be able to edit, edit that particular document. So we normally create a PDF file from our master file and we save this um, as a separate document when we've completed it for our customer and then we only send them the PDF version. So I'm going to show you an example of that in a moment. Let's just see um, a few options up here. So there's this option here called toggle formatting. And what that allows you to see is like where all the carriage returns are and any sort of indentation or any sort of bullet list and stuff like that. Uh, you know, people that write a lot of documents or are doing a lot of stuff, they normally use this tool here, but I hardly ever use it. Uh, it can be useful though to see where all your carriage returns are and your paragraph spacing and stuff like that. It can be useful sometimes. Um, in here, you can select text, right? Like this, and you can change the color of it. So if you want to emphasize something, you can do that. And if you select this um, and we go to clear format, it will remove the formatting. Let's get rid of this bold here. And then we can select the text again. And in theory, you don't really need to select the text. You can just click block justify and it will justify that whole paragraph like this. So justification is optional. Sometimes um, if we go down to here, Let's uh, add a second title again. So we'll just copy this block here. Now, if you notice, um, when I copied this text and pasted it down, it went to a second page. It didn't go to this section here. So to move that content back up, all you do is move to the first the page before. And I want to move this content up. Just move to this position and hit the delete key on your keyboard and that will move it to that position and get rid of that extra page below. And underneath here, I will say um, something like, uh, let's center align it, right? So I want to center the text. Maybe we'll go down one more line and thanks for your help. Just writing some random text. We might select that and bold it. The only reason I did that is to show you that you can center text. You can also right align the text. So you might have something that you want to right align left align or center. So that's the centering option there. Um, sometimes in a document, you want to emphasize something. So something that's important. So let's take this text, for example, we can highlight it and we can use the highlight color tool. So we can click there and then the background will be highlighted. 
or we can click here and say this piece of text here uh, let's select this here and we can highlight it like a green color for example I would hardly ever do that sometimes I actually do that in a document where um, I pick I pick specific colors so if I'm writing something to my customer it will just be default black text but I might write a title or something like developer notes here and then inside the developer notes there might be something really important like these two bullets here I might write a comment next to them and I'll highlight them like this and then I'll, I'll highlight them green or normally to be to be fair I highlight them um, a blue color for developers so when developers see this or when my staff see this they see blue and they know that automatically that's a comment for them and then I kind of explain that to my my customer when I email them I say Every, everything in blue is ready for the developers as a comment so we'll get rid of that for now okay so let's show you a few more things in this section here which we can still see is center line so I'm just going to left align it and I'm going to type in the 22nd of May 2014 or 2018 let's make it September so you can see it did something called superscript and it did it automatically and that's this option right here so you can do subscript which will be below let's zoom in here a little bit maybe you can see it a bit easier here so this is called subscript when you click this one and this one's called superscript so that's if you put a date in and you want subscript superscript you can use those options normally I don't type in dates like that normally I just use like a standard UK date format I think in America you put the month first and then in the day and then the year over here we do day year the month which kind of makes sense to me I don't know why people put the month first it's the day first then the month then the year but you know everyone to their own what can I say um, what else do we have here let's have a quick look this you know there's so many options up here uh, what does this do clear format okay that's kind of another way to clear format and you can actually select it and then highlight something maybe click on it clear direct formatting so let's select this make it red and then select this and that will set it back to its default formatting okay so that option is really where you highlighted some information and you maybe make it bold you change the color you can give it a background color as well if you've got this crazy formatting going and you want to get rid of it you just highlight it and you click this tool here and it will set it back to its default font style it's quite nice actually um, sometimes you might write something like uh, some text will go here and you've done that you've saved the document for example but you want to get rid of it it might be something a, a, you know, a substantial amount of text you can use the control con function control Z there's also this option up here called undo but if you do control Z it will get rid of it the, it will get rid of the full stop and then it will start to get rid of all the text just by pressing Control Z, there's a certain amount of steps that it can remember going backwards and going forwards. So if I press Control Y, I can redo. So Control Z is to undo, and Control Y is to redo. And you can also use these options here. So undo, 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 and then redo, redo, redo. So these are that's what that's this does here. Oi, okay. So we did look at um, bullet list, but if I were to select this text here, we can do a number list as well, one, two, three, four. So we don't only have bullets, we have number lists as well. So maybe we just show four examples of web projects here, for example. So this is, a, this is how we're gonna go about building this document. I'll, I think for now, I'm gonna stop this tutorial. It's been going on for quite a bit of time now. Um, and I think what we'll do is we will, create a second version of this tutorial where we'll go through some more advanced options like adding charts or some default formatting or adding fills and there's quite a few options up here but always remember you can always go to help 
and user guides and there's online documentation there's tons of information this project is uh, very well documented it's free software so if you're not sure about LibreOffice what you can also do is go to um, I'll put a YouTube link as well but if you go to my YouTube channel I'll put a link to this video I'll quickly show it to you go to videos here so go to videos and then uh, in here we will have how to install LibreOffice 6 on Windows 10. So there's a tutorial here showing you how to install this software called LibreOffice 6, which is uh, LibreOffice Calc. Here it is, LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Draw, and then there's also LibreOffice... Uh, impress here there's them three bits of software right here these four actually so i'll do a tutorial later on libreoffice uh, calc i want to do one on libreoffice impress i don't really do many presentations so i don't really use this software very often but i want to learn how to use it properly so i'm going to learn that and then share that knowledge with you as well okay so i'm going to save this document and i'm going to close this page there's a reason for that. Let's go over to here. So in here, I'm just going to create a folder called ARCHIVE Archive. And normally what I do is I create this default document here. Yeah? And maybe we'll create another folder called Assets. So Assets will just be these two images. We'll drag and drop them in there into this folder. So we've got these elements in here. And then we've got this default document, and then we've got this archive here. So normally what I would do is copy this document into the archive. I want to keep a copy of it. And then what I would do is right click, and then normally I just right click on the document, drag it down, let it go, and then create a copy document here. And then I will give it the company name that I'm going to be sending the document to. So let's just say it's called... The company I'm sending it to is called Hello World Limited. That's the company name. And then normally I'll write what the type of project I'm working on. So it's called an e-commerce website. And then normally what I do is call it version one. And with the default document, one thing you can do is put in zero zero dash like this. And that will always make sure that this document, doesn't matter how many documents you put below, because you put 00 dash or just 00, Microsoft will always put numeric documents, so ones that have numeric values at the top of the page. And normally I do that with, um, like, so for example, if I did with asset document, if I did 00 dash assets, then assets will sit above archive because it has 00 there, you see? But alphabetically, to be correct, um, archive should really come first. So if I change archive to 00, zero like that, then archive will sit above. <coughs> so normally I do 00 zero, zero archive, and then I do zero, 01 assets, and then any other folder I create, I'll create other subdirectories below for them with a numeric value. The actual company ones, you don't need to do that because you want them in alphabetical order. And in theory, normally I'll create a whole folder on my computer inside a company directory just to send this document to that client and I'll store that in a separate directory somewhere else for this customer. Okay, so we created this document and we've got a default document here. The default document, we only edit if we want to change some sort of formatting in here. When I double click on it, you can see it's an ODT document and Microsoft is saying, do you want to open it with Word? I want to click on LibreOffice Writer, that's what I created it with and say always use this app this to open the, the document I can click OK and then if I ever double click on it again uh, double click it will open it in LibreOffice now for any reason if you wanted to open it say for example in OpenOffice you can right click and go to open with and then you can select the other applications here you've got Microsoft Word and you've got OpenOffice Writer here for example now, OpenOffice Writer is very, very similar uh, to LibreOffice. In fact, they're kind of 
built on the same tech you could say you can even see like the same logic applies and everything um i've kind of moved to LibreOffice. i just think i don't know for some reason it just seems to look better um but open office is just as powerful so sometimes on a machine i've got a few machines that i use and sometimes LibreOffice is not on there so i use open office instead so we've created a copy of this document it's called hello world limited it's called e-commerce website so if i open this document um normally i say like uh, something up here maybe like e-commerce uh, website design project version one and i'll put the company name in here then i'll write what some description about what i'm doing normally but if you were to create this document and it had most of the information can you see how powerful this is now so if this introduction was about e-commerce and i created a default document so let's close this for a second imagine if i created a let's just copy this one down here right this hello world one and if i named it zero one e-commerce website something like default and if i delete well, actually we'll leave that one there but if i were to open this document and this title was always the same so i know that when i'm going to create a new e-commerce project for a customer all i've got to do is go in here and change the date that's my logo that's my address i change the date here the title is already done for me maybe this information at the beginning is generic so it's just talking about what e-commerce projects are or how we build them so this is always default so when i make a copy of this default document again this bit is already done for me i don't have to do anything and then this bullet list might be very consistent so it might say uh home page e-commerce shop subcategories and all this bullet list is kind of default done for me and i might have to make some slight modifications to it but the the intro line is the same as what it will always be for each e-commerce project and then the picture here i can maybe change it but the text here is always default it might talk about some of the options that are available in e-commerce and then down here i've got a table and this might be something to do with customer registration or some fields or something but the information above might be default and i just edit the table only and then in here i've got an introduction about sending um example projects and in here i might just list 10 or 15 e-commerce example projects and then as i create new ones i might just change the first few first few and just leave the rest as they are and then this might be a little bit of introduction at the bottom saying for the customer to contact you uh, if they want to proceed with the project but in this whole document i may have to change a handful of things because all of the formatting is done for me so that is why uh, we can have multiple default documents i've got a default one here that's just a generic one i've got one that's specific to e-commerce i might have another one that's specific to wordpress or some other type of project so in theory what we could do is delete this hello world one we could copy this e-commerce one down and we could just put inside of here we'll get rid of this zero one we'll replace it with hello world limited which is the company name that we're going to do the project for and if you notice every time we copy a document it always puts this copy at the end because it doesn't want to you can't have two documents in the same directory with the same name so we'll get rid of this all of this and just have hello world um, limited e-commerce and you'll notice that the document sits here at the bottom because we've got 0100 and these documents will always sit above we can open up this document and the title is already done for us the date we might change that because it's uh you know a few days later we're doing this document so we'll say the 12th or the 10th we press Control s to save we'll write in some new information we'll put that into this document we'll save it and then the last thing we'll do is click pdf here export pdf and then we'll go to the desktop uh, we'll go to youtube LibreOffice, and we'll click save now we've got two documents in here we've got matching pairs so we've got the original document this one i will not be sending to my customer but i will be sending this one the pdf and here it is the customer can print this out you can save yourself a bit of paper and cost because you don't need to print it you just email it to your customer and preferably your customer won't print it as well so you both just have a pdf that you can sit down and read together or look through and that's it if you click on this link here it will pop open in um 
a little warning message saying, hold on a second, do you want to make sure that this, this actual link is clickable, it's okay to open it? That's just a, like a default precaution. We will click allow and then it will load up my website. We can go down here and click on core Maxwell, and click okay. Just remember this action for this site for all PDF documents. I'm gonna untick this and click allow and then click it. But if I click on it again, it's gonna ask me that same question. So if I leave this ticked and click allow and close it, if I were to come back and open this document in theory, it shouldn't ask me the question when I click on this link. So it doesn't ask me anymore because, and it won't ask me if I click on this one either. But if I were to click on this third one, it's going to ask me that question. Are you sure you want to do it? Because it's remember this action for this site for all PDF documents. It doesn't matter what other document you ever open again, this particular link gets added to what we call a whitelist inside this software. We click allow and that will open. So that's it. There's not much else I can say. I will be making a more advanced tutorial to follow this one where we have some more um, advanced features that we can look at inside LibreOffice. But this should be a really good place for you to start. In theory, now you've got your master document, right? You've got your default one here. You can make a copy of your default one. And when you copy it, then you can rename it to something like e-commerce website. Then this becomes your default document for e-commerce projects and whenever you want to do a quote for a client for e-commerce or if you did if you were running a catering business and you wanted to do like um uh maybe you got a menu set up in your document for uh private parties and then you've got one for corporate parties and then you've got one for uh birthday parties and maybe anniversary parties or whatever it might be so you're you're a catering company and you've got about six or seven of these documents all set up as defaults and we click on this one and this one happens to be uh, corporate events then you've got your corporate event title a description of what it's all about what happens at the corporate event you maybe provide staff and you provide all the cutlery and all the good stuff and you've got a picture here maybe of some corporate event that you did before um you know and then you've got a table and that table could actually be the menu of the food that you're offering and then maybe you put links to some galleries on your website of, of corporate events that you've done before and then you could copy that document and make a default one for birthday parties and so forth so you get the gist of it so that's the power of having a default document and replicating it okay i'm going to stop talking i've done enough and that's the end of this tutorial and i look forward to seeing you on the next dcp web tutorial